Self-harm is painted as a particular portrait of sketched lines across arms and scars that don't heal. But there are other ways to self-harm that aren't as openly discussed. The Oxford Dictionary defines self-harm as the deliberate injury to oneself, typically as a manifestation of a psychological or psychiatric disorder. The key word there being deliberate. Everyone has unhealthy habits, but if the intention is to hurt yourself, then it becomes a type of self-harm. So how do we stop these dangerous habits? The first step to combating them is materializing them, changing the label from bad habits to things that damage. Here are five ways that you're self-harming. Before we begin, we at Psych2Go want to give each and every one of you a big thank you. With your support, we are able to produce high-quality content and reach our goal of making psychology more accessible to everyone. Before we get started, today's video is made possible by The Great Courses Plus. It's an on-demand video learning service where you can enjoy lectures on the go, taught by top award-winning professors from Ivy League universities and schools around the world. Now let's get started on today's video. 1. Sleep Deprivation A common symptom of depression can be oversleeping, but another sign can be willful insomnia. When you stay awake because you don't believe you deserve rest, or you feel a compulsion to keep yourself up, it becomes an act of self-harm. Lack of sleep can cause moodiness, poor concentration, poor memory, worsened symptoms of depression, hallucinations, and even death. 2. Excessive exercise Self-harm can be used to force feeling when everything feels numb. In the wise words of Elle Woods from Legally Blonde, exercise gives you endorphins, and endorphins make you happy. But when there is no other way to feel content in your life, endorphins can become addictions. Over-exercising can cause problems in the heart and blood vessels, bone problems, arrhythmia, and weaken the immune system. Doctors recommend that you limit exercise to an hour a day unless you are an athlete and have a regimen that specifies otherwise. 3. Over or under eating While over and under eating are signs of eating disorders, they can go hand in hand with self-harm. Forcing yourself to eat when you don't want to or not eating enough is dangerous. Binge eating can cause stress, heart disease, pain in the back and joints, and worsen symptoms of depression. Under eating can cause extreme weight loss, elevated liver enzymes, fatigue, dizziness, and even death. 4. Isolation Whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, everyone needs some form of human interaction. Forcing yourself to be alone and missing opportunities because you can't feel anything or you think you don't deserve to have fun is destructive. Studies have shown that prolonged isolation can raise blood pressure and make you more susceptible to diseases. It can cause headaches, dizziness, and sweat. In extreme cases, people who have undergone absurd amounts of solitary confinement were found to grow severely anxious and even hallucinate. In one study, the effects of isolation stayed present even after they were released. 5. Triggering yourself Triggers are defined as things that re-trigger trauma in the form of flashbacks or overwhelming feelings of sadness, anxiety, or panic. It is best to avoid your triggers whenever possible. However, some people use their triggers as a form of self-harm, purposefully seeking out things that will affect them adversely. Everyone's triggers and their effects are different, but no one should seek them out. Forcing yourself to experience symptoms that will hurt you is never okay. If you are experiencing any of the above urges, please talk to a loved one, licensed professional, or helpline. No one deserves to be in pain, no matter what your self-harming impulses are telling you. We at Psych2Go urge you to seek help, because it will get better. We know that phrase tends to sound like a broken record, but one day it will be your favorite song, and you should be around to hear it. We want to become a safe place for you, so feel free to share your story in the comments below. If you thought this video was helpful, please give us a like and be sure to subscribe for more psychology-related content. And as always, thanks for watching. As mentioned in the beginning, The Great Courses Plus is a series of online learning courses taught by top award-winning professors, with over 8,000 videos covering psychology, history, philosophy, self-improvement, and more. One of my favorite ones is The Psychology of Performance, How to Be Your Best in Life by Eddie O'Connor, going through confidence, self-love, and positive thinking. Right now, The Great Courses Plus is offering Psych2Go fans a free trial using the link www.thegreatcoursesplus.com slash psych2go in the description.
Supporting them means supporting us too. And as always, keep learning, keep growing, and keep fighting. Thanks again for watching this video, and please consider sharing it with someone who might enjoy it. More exposure for this video also means more people helped, and more sponsors for us to keep making more videos free of charge for the worldwide community.